Hey YouTube, Rook here from Rook Geek Goodness, my little channel web for all things geeky and cool. And welcome back to the channel, guys. Welcome back to the Funko review and unboxing video. I'm super stoked to do this video review with all my viewers and subscribers. If you're someone new, I hope you follow me on YouTube. Definitely click that subscribe button. It'll help this video get noticed across the YouTube platform for people looking for this content can find it. So what are we talking about in this video? We're talking old school anime, a piece that I loved as a kid growing up. Absolutely dug this anime. We're talking talking about the original version, which is what this is based on until it got Americanized, which was called Science Ninja Team Gotchaman, otherwise known as just Gotchaman, listed on these Funko Pops here. We have three different characters we're looking at. We're looking at Ken the Eagle, we're looking at Joe the Condor, and we're looking at June the Swan. There's a total, really, of five characters uh, based on the original anime, but they've only done three in this particular wave. I hope they do more of them, but of course, this is what we have right now to go with. Again, I hope they make a second wave. To to give us the rest of the team, it'll be very, very cool. So a little bit of backstory about Gotchman, if you're not familiar with it. Again, it came out in 1972. It was way ahead of its time based on the animation for its time. Really cool, really neat animation. Loved it growing up as a kid. The Science Ninja Team Gotchman is what it was called in Japan. It got Americanized technically three different times. It was listed as probably the most popular version was called Battle of the Planets. Then it got turned into something called G-Force. I think it was called Eagle Riders, which was a third iteration same animation the whole time i believe eagle riders they also did the second season of it which is something i would not recommend just watch the first season battle of planets or g-force you would really love this animation it is a super super cool high action anime absolutely loved it growing up as a kid i'm super stoked to do this you can tell how excited i am to bring these products to you guys and i love this animation growing up as a kid that's why it has a real near and dear portion of my heart because i like these particular characters i love the animation style for Science Ninja Team Gatchaman, or otherwise known as Battle of the Planets or G-Force. So let's head into our breakdown segment. The very first thing we do in a breakdown segment is look at the packaging and presentation. It'd be much easier to focus on one item at a time, and that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to pull two of these off and focus first on them individually. Let's go first with Ken the Eagle. Ken the Eagle is the leader of the group. Uh, he's also known as Mark in the American version, Battle of the Planets, and in G-Force, but he's called Ken the Eagle in the Gatchaman cartoon, which is what this is is derived from, so just so you know. Up at the top, we have Pop Animation. It's really good that they left it in the Pop Animations group, because that's where this should belong. It's an animation. That's what they should have it in. Right here, we have the logo right here, which says Gotchaman. The big G in the American version, they listed it listed as G-Force. They never called it Gotchaman. Of course, that's just the Japanese version of what it's called. Up here is the uh, where it falls in the list, which is Pop number 1030. Over here, we have a shot of what Ken the Eagle looks like out of packaging. Over here, does say Ken the Eagle over here. And the back is kind of what you'd see at the beginning of the trailer when it comes into the cartoon. You see the planet right there, which is, they always shoot, show that at the beginning and the end of the cartoon. A nice shot of Ken the Eagle right here. Love this pop. Love that they made Ken the Eagle. Awesome pop. Next, let's focus on Joe the Condor. He's more of the lone gunman. He's more of the rogue character. He uh, has a temper. Uh, he's your typical, I would say more of like the anti-hero linked to the team. He always has goes, you know, they go for odds with these two that always clash. Both Ken and Joe always clash, but that's uh, what he is in the show. He looks really good. Again, we have pop animation here. Gotcha in across the top. Pop 1031. Again, a shot of what Joe looks like out of packaging. Joe the Condor right here listed. And the back of the packaging, again, the same image of all three characters that are available in the wave. Next, we have the only female character on the team. We have Jun the Swan. She's otherwise known as Princess. I believe they called Joe here Jason in the American version, but she was also known as Princess in the American version. She was known, known as Jun the Swan. If you can't figure it out, they're based on birds, which is Jun the Swan. We have Ken the Eagle. You have Joe the Condor. They're all based on birds, just so you know that now. Again, we have Pop Animation. We have Gotchman Logo 1032. Over here, we have Jun the Swan one out of packaging, what it would look like. And we have, of course, Juno Swan on this side and the back of the packaging focusing on, the, again, the same image we saw in the other two. And they shot of her here and that packaging right there in the back of the front and ending of the cartoon. I think it would look better to display these physically out of packaging. I like displaying both in packaging and out of packaging, but I think this group of three should definitely be taken off of card, take them out of the box, play with your toys. I like both in packaging and out of packaging, just so you know that now. So that being said, let's get all three of these out of packaging and continue the breakdown segment. 
All right guys, we have a Gotchaman Funko Pops out of packaging. Next thing we do to take Pops out of packaging is look at the paint and articulation. Again, let's focus on them one at a time. It's much easier to talk about it this way. First, looking at, of course, Ken the Eagle, or Mark, as you know in, in the American version. I do like what Funko did with this Pop. It looks just like he does right out of the anime. It looks amazing. Uh, and again, he's based on the Eagle bird. That's why he's all white in this design. I do like that, even down to the really cool antenna piece sticking out right here through the top. He does have that in the cartoon. This, of course, mask right there looks like a helmet, which looks awesome. His hair poking through right there on the sides, which is something he has in the cartoon as well. Again, white outfit. You got blue trims. You got the nice white cape on the back. On the inside, they have the inlay, which is this nice little red motif, which again, same thing in the animation. The buckle right there, his belt looks awesome. It has the G symbol. Now, one thing I didn't talk about yet is in the show, they have what they call they be able to transform. The normal civilians in the show, and what they do is they have what they're called their cybernetic implants. That's what their kind of big thing is here. That's why they can turn into these bird people. That's the idea. And they have a watch on their wrist. And in the Japanese version, how they would quote unquote transform is they would put their watch up to their face and go bird go and you would see this little spinning animation and their normal outfit would change like their normal they would have these normal shirts on where they would have numeric numbers let's say he would have the number one on his shirt and then it would kind of spin around and he'd be in this outfit same thing with their vehicles they each have their own specific vehicles that they drive he drives a or pilots a plane a, a propeller plane when he does his bird go not only does he change into this outfit but the plane also transforms into a jet just so you know that now just some again backstory some information for you also they each have a unique weapon if you notice here you see this sort of uh, weapon in his hand it looks sort of like a boomerang that's the intention It's a sonic boomerang that's what this weapon is when he would normally throw it in the cartoon it's folded and collapsed when he throws it it opens and extends out so you have two points coming out with a point in the middle that's the idea he'd throw it it would hit all these people and come back to his hand that's the gimmick also on top, you can see eyes for the eagle. So you have this black indentation here, black overlay, some paint right there. You have some yellow on the outside and a green little gem on the inside. That's how it looked in the cartoon. Looks amazing. Love the way this guy looks. Articulation, head will spin 360. As you can see me spinning it around here with no hindrance. Absolutely love that. It's great that Funko made it with not a bobblehead. I do like that. Now, Ken specifically is a little bit on the top heavy side. He looks a pitch over. So please be aware that you might have to kind of bend the head back a little bit, mess with the cape a little bit to get him so he stands without any problems. Just be aware. Mine does that. Yours may do that too. Next, we focus on the second one, which is, of course, Joe the Condor. Now, Joe and Ken share a little bit of similarities. The cape is a little bit different. The buck is a little bit different in design, but very similar the way it looks here. Again, Joe's more of the, the roughneck here. He's more of the lone gun. He's more of the, I would call him more of the anti-hero. Uh, he's more of the rebel on the team. Uh, he looks great. He has a black motif on his head, blue, uh, dark blue on the cape, light blue on the inside. So it's two-tone, just like Ken's is two-tone where he had white here, excuse me, white on the back, red on the inside. You have dark blue here, but it may not come across on camera very well, but a lighter blue on the inside right here. Sort of brown, like a darkish brown costume. Again, the Gotchman symbol right here on his belt. Uh, he has, of course, darker pants and the dark gloves. He uses two different weapon systems. He has these uh, feathers right here. You can see it right here in his hand. It's more like a big quill. He would throw these out and hit people in the neck. Uh, very violent for a Japanese cartoon. The American version, never, people usually didn't get hit in the neck. They would sort of edit that out a little bit. So if you want the more violent version, definitely watch the Japanese version, which watch, of course, is Gotchaman. Over in this hand right here, he has a gun, this, this weapon, right? It's a big, more of like a pistol, but it's, a, I guess, a bigger pistol. It's not a rifle, uh, but he has different weapon systems he uses for this as well, different attachments. You can have put drills on here. He'll have these kind of uh, hook-shaped, like, 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 like uh, curve-shaped fronts that would fire off. More of a grab gun like think of like Batman's grappling gun used more offensively than to climb on something that's what that weapon system is here so it's very cool that he has that still on the top he also sports a different color he has these red inlays with the yellow and the green as opposed to Ken's which was black and red so very similar again they share that in common same sort of idea based on an eagle based on a condor that's the course the motif again he also has the beak as well 
His hair, hair is coming through the front. Uh, he's known as, of course, Joe. He's also known as Jason for the American version. Him, same thing, articulation spins 360 with no hindrance. He doesn't really have any issues standing compared to what Ken has. Ken, for some reason, as I mentioned, he just likes to topple over, so I have to keep kind of futzing with the head a little bit to get him to stand properly. I wish they maybe would have given him a figure stand or adjusted the weight a little bit more so it'd be more on the back of the helmet as opposed to more on the front of the helmet because I think there's just a little bit more material and he feels he feels heavier compared to Joe. I think Joe can stand with no real issue. Then we come to the only female character which is June the Swan. June the Swan is more petite. Of course it's a swan. A more delicate bird in this sort of iteration. And they made her a small, smaller figure and she's very petite in the cart tune. She does look good. I do like what they did with her. Again, she's more of a white costume, just like Ken. White on the back here. And of course, you have red on the inlay, just like Ken's it would be. Same sort of deco. As again, red here. And of course, you have white here. Very similar sort of design. I do like that. She also sports that weird antenna thing coming up from the back of the helmet. She has sort of orange eyes with black right there. Her hair, of course, is coming through from the top. Her weapon system, of course, she uses a yo-yo. Why not? She uses a yo-yo. Also, she's like their explosive experts when they do demolitions. She's always planting bombs and things like that in the TV show, so it's very, very cool. And again, she supports the figure stand. Very thin body, as I mentioned before. Without the figure stand, she would not stand at all. So now let's bring back all three of our characters in here. We got Joe, we got June, and of course we have Ken, the eagle, the leader. As you see, he is tipping forward, as I mentioned before. Be, again, be aware of that. There's this underlying romance relationship between both June and Ken, of course, otherwise known as Princess in the American version. That's what she's called. And of course, uh, Mark in American version, and Jason, again. I do like all three of these characters. I do. I love the animation. I love this growing up as a kid. One of my first animations I remember growing up and watching. Um, things like Battle of the Planets. Things like Robotech. Things like Star Blazers are intrinsically deep in my heart. I absolutely love this cartoon growing up. If you ask me in more of a final thoughts approach, should you buy these pops? If you liked Gotchaman as growing up as a kid. If you liked Battle of the Planets as a kid. If you like old school animation as a kid, definitely buy these pops. I highly Highly, highly, highly recommend it. Price isn't too bad. I believe they're about $12, $13 a piece. I got the June Pop here on my vacation down to Orlando. Both Ken and Joe, surprisingly, I got Walmart of all places. These are not considered exclusive. They are considered common pops. I do hope they make more of them. I want to get Kiop, which is a small little midget uh, guy. And of course, Tiny, which is the big, like this heavy set. Uh, um, I want to use big boned. I want to use the word fat. It's not a proper word. But a heavier set guy. He was the pilot of their ship called the Phoenix. And there's stuff you could do with the Phoenix, which I'll probably talk about in another video, maybe on a stream. So I do hope you like my video review of the Gotchaman Pops. I do hope you do like it. Give that video a like at the bottom of the page. Click that all important subscribe button. When you subscribe to the channel, click the bell to kind of be notified the latest videos. And of course, last but not least, you can click windows over here to watch more of my content. Take care guys, see you next video, and bye bye.